Hello everyone, I'd like to take you through an, an uh, activity that I would do in class normally, but since I'm out of town, I'm going to have to do it remotely. Uh, and hopefully you can find your way to a computer that has access to Microsoft Excel so that you can go through this as well. Uh, following this, there will be a homework assignment that builds off of the things that you would practice right here. So, what I want to talk about today is looking at data to find insights for uh, related to things happening in an organization. And one, at one point I collected a whole bunch of data related to an experiment that I conducted. I had 767 people participate in an experiment where I was trying to encourage them to share knowledge. Uh, I have a question here on the page and I say, you know, before looking at the data, what would you guess makes people share or not share knowledge in a work-oriented social forum. So if you had like Facebook but a work version of that, you know, what would cause people to share knowledge? And if you want, go ahead and pause the video for a second, uh, you know, and as soon as you've thought of maybe two things, uh, continue on. Well, some of the things you might think about are maybe incentives, financial incentives, or punishment. It could be age, it could be the uh, social disposition of the person. Some people are more outgoing than others, so we might call that a personality type. So there's a lot of different things that might cause people to share knowledge or not share knowledge in a work setting. And uh, so my uh, experiment gave people access to a Facebook-like work site, uh, and um, I gave them different things to read, scenarios. We call that treatment in experiment, treatments in experimental language. So here's some examples of this. So the knowledge sharing site has comments enabled on all tips. Uh, the knowledge sharing site does not have a community manager. The, to encourage collaboration with others, you will earn one extra dollar for each tip that you make to the, to the knowledge sharing site. So I was manipulating four different categories of things and they had 20 minutes to work and I wanted to see if um, some messages made people more likely to share knowledge than others. Here's the data set that comes out of that. Alright, moving on down. Um, the column that I, that, yeah, that I care about most is total knowledge shared. So if I go uh, so if I start in this spreadsheet and move over a little bit, it's bolded, and I see that it's uh, right now it's ordered from smallest, from largest to smallest. So the most number of distinct items that people shared or postings was 26, and then uh, if I scroll down a bit, uh, a bunch of them did zero. So I'm looking at column R. Um, here are some things that I captured about each person. I captured their gender, their age, what year in school they were, what major they uh, were in. Uh, and I have here in parentheses the column name uh, that contains this information. So any of these might be predictors of why people would share knowledge or, or not share knowledge. And I want you to think beyond just this experiment. Uh, you might come into sets of data at work and the idea is to try and think of what are the causal factors that might be associated with some outcome of interest. And so it might be patient deaths, or it might be uh, the discovery of um, you know, new energy sources in land or whatever. So there might be a whole bunch of predictors and some outcome of interest. So in, in addition to just some demographic information, down here we see things like were they paid salary, where they paid piece rate and so piece rate is where people are paid for each item that they do whereas salaried is where uh, you get paid as long as you fulfill a certain block of time so think of the difference between people that are salaried and paid or you know well salaried and they just work a regular desk job versus a salesperson who gets paid on commission that's piece rate um, some people uh, so this is for talking about like for, for a primary job that somebody might have in my experiment um, and then related to knowledge sharing specifically, were they paid for that? One is yes, zero is no. Uh, social features, uh, this indicated whether or not uh, social, fe social features were enabled in this online platform. So people were making comments and it's like, hey, good job, I really like your uh, knowledge post versus, you know, some of them didn't get that. And so maybe that might cause a difference. Um, next thing is 
uh, knowledge moderator. So some people were told that somebody was looking over their shoulder and would help them if there were problems. So the S means supportive moderator. And the other people were told that there was a policing person looking over their shoulder. That's what the P stands for. Uh, so um, a 1 means they were present and a 0 means they were not present. So the idea being, again, with these last ones, um, did if people were told that somebody's going to be looking over their shoulder watching their contributions, did that make them more likely to share knowledge or less likely? So um, you get data then that has lots of columns in the real world and, and they have meaning. And uh, so let's, uh, let's go on to some questions that we might ask about the data that came out of this experiment. Uh, how many people shared knowledge? All right, let's, let me go over to this spreadsheet and, and introduce you to pivot tables. Some of you use this uh, a lot, and some of you have never seen this before. So this is kind of the key part of the lesson. So I'm going to do Control A, highlight all of the data in my spreadsheet, and then do Insert Pivot Table. And it'll tell me the range that it's picking, and that's great. And it's going to put it on a new worksheet. I like that. So. And with that, I'm on to a new page. Now, all of my columns are now listed over here on the right-hand side. And these, uh, the four boxes in the lower right are where I'm going to be dragging these column names that will give me tables of data over here on the left. And there's actually things called pivot charts, which will get us not only tabular data, but um, more graphical displays of the information. But we won't be doing pivot charts today. Um, all right. so. Uh, one of the things I was curious about there it, from that question was how many people shared knowledge? So um, now in addition to total knowledge shared here for each individual person, I have shared knowledge, yes, no. Let me go over to the spreadsheet for a second and, and, and see what, the, oh, go back to the other tab and see what that looks like. So shared knowledge, one is yes, and down here at zero is no. So you'll You'll notice in terms of total knowledge shared, as soon as the R column hits hits zero contributions, that, that means that there's also a corresponding zero they didn't share. So if we get the count of ones here, that'll tell us how many people shared knowledge, right? Um, since we're not double counting. So I'll take shared knowledge, yes, no, move that down to values. And by default, it says sum of shared knowledge, yes, no, down here. and it's uh, the count there is 229. So we know that there were 760 pe 776, 767 people to begin with in the experiment, and 229 of them shared knowledge. Um, so the default thing for numerical information is to sum it, but we have other options. If I now you can't see this too well, so I'll try and move it up. Uh, if I do a drop down here at the very bottom off the screen where you can't see, it says value field settings, the very last item in the box. So I can do things like the count of people that shared knowledge, the average, uh, the max, the min. Uh, we probably know what that is in this case. Um, so anyway, great, great things to know. Um, all right, let's go back to other questions we might be concerned about. Uh, let's see. What was the average amount of knowledge shared? All right, well, the way we would do that is I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just going to notice how I start dra dragging it anywhere, and it gets a little X, so it'll disappear if I pull it back up there. So I want to get the average amount of knowledge shared. I take total knowledge shared, drop it down there, and I'm going to select a different option. Again, I'm going down to value field settings. I'm selecting average. Now it says average down here and we can see that the average person in uh, this data set shared 0.91 or almost the average person shared almost a whole item of knowledge in the experiment um, let's see what the next question is among people that thought knowledge sharing was important what was their average Okay, there's another column here. Uh, this, this was not an intervention. This was just something we asked people uh, which they thought was more important, sharing knowledge with colleagues or doing their work. And KSMI means knowledge sharing most important. So some people, um, if you can go back to the data here and, and look at it, it it's going to be 
um, uh, here in column U, some people picked one and one, some people picked zero. So yes or no. So um, so thinking through this, I know we're moving through it fast, but um, you know, if people think knowledge sharing is more important than their work, their real work, are they more likely to share knowledge? Probably so. We haven't really gotten to the averages yet, but we're we're getting there. So all right, the question again, among people that thought knowledge sharing was important, what was their average? All right, so there's a couple different ways I could do that. Um, so I'm going to go back to total knowledge shared, change that to average. Okay, and I want to filter this based on people that thought knowledge sharing was important. One way I could do this is I could drag this into filter. And after I drag it to filter, a new thing shows up here where I can select this drop down and pick you know either item that I want. And so if I go just to the people that thought knowledge sharing was important, I see their average was 2.33. If I go just among people who didn't think it was important, it goes down to 0.5. Now, what we're doing is we're exploring our data and we're getting closer to insight into what might have been the causal factors in our data set that resulted in some outcome of interest. And um, now this isn't real statistics yet. We're not doing statistical tests, uh, but we are exploring the data in a way preliminarily that helps us get some intuition for what we'll probably find when we when we do do some statistical tests. And again, this could apply, apply to a lot of other domains. You, you can start with uh, a pivot table on a block of data and start exploring it and, and get really interesting insights from it. Um, in addition to doing filters, another thing I can do is instead of putting it there, I can move it over into columns. And now I can see both things side by side. Uh, so for the knowledge sharing most important zero people, their average is 0.5. And for people that thought it was more important than, than work, uh, they're at 2.33. So I got the, to the grand total average on the side. And uh, this gives me some real good insight as I uh, put people into two different categories. Uh, if I wanted to get real tricky, I could put a little count underneath each one as well. Um, and that would tell me the total number of people that fell in each category, and that would be interesting too. But let's go and see what the questions were. Among people that did not think knowledge sharing was important, what was their average? Well, we already got that. What was the maximum amount of knowledge shared in total? All right, let's go figure that one out. Um, I'm going to get rid of that filter. So instead of average, uh, we know how to do that. Go down to value field settings. We'll go to max. And the highest number is 26. We kind of knew that because we sorted. Uh, but um, you don't, maybe you, this is an alternative to sorting, I suppose. It's a lot less clunky. Um, next question, probably minimum, right? Maybe not. Um, how many people were female? Okay, let's look at that. So I'm going to get rid of. I'm going to get rid of this information. Um, so I'm going to put gender in my filter, but there's nothing underneath it yet. So I can select female or male. Um, now, this is kind of a weird thing to do. It doesn't matter which column I pick. I just need the, the count of the number of things in it. Um, so 50% of the people were female and 50% of the people were male, and I had 100 people. Um, it doesn't matter which column I drop down there. The, the, uh, I just need, I'll, I'll pick ID in this case. Um, but instead of the sum of the ID, what I want is the count of the ID. And it could be count of anything in there. So what I see is there are 767 people in this data set, which makes sense. And um, if I click female, I see there's 337. Or uh, another way I could do this, as I showed you before, is I could move from the filter over to the columns, and I can see the females are 337, the males are 430, and the grand total is 767. Instead of putting it in columns, let's see what happens if I put it under rows. Um, we get the same data, it's just shown differently. Uh, so you can actually layer your, your columns and your filters and your rows uh, for, for things that may be of interest. Uh, let's go with our next one. How many were male? Well, we could figure that out. Now we say, did gender matter for knowledge sharing? Maybe this is our last uh, difficult question. How would we determine if gender managed or mattered for knowledge sharing? Well, um, 
One thing I could do here is I could take total knowledge shared and I could put sum under values, but um, that just tells me that men did more, but there was more men to begin with. So that's not terribly insightful. Uh, one thing I could do is I could go to value settings and I can do average. And here I see that women on average uh, communicate more than men. And it seems like there's a joke that would go in there, but let's not do that and get in trouble. So uh, it just so happened in this case that women shared more in this online setting than men did. Um, that answers all the questions here. With this, you should be set up to be able to, to do your homework.